Okay, it's happened, it's happened, it's finally happened. I don't want anyone to panic, but we are officially experiencing a code green because the Wicked trailer just dropped. Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am a theatre critic, pundit, and fan, covering all things theatre, from the West End to Broadway, and this year, of course, theatre fans worldwide are particularly excited because we are finally, after like, two decades of anticipation, getting a feature film adaptation of the hit musical Wicked, which recently celebrated 20 years on Broadway. Thank you, Ashley, for getting me this hat. Wicked the Musical, which opened at the Gershwin Theatre in 2003 and continues to play there in New York, of course, also at the Apollo Victoria Theatre here in London, as well as touring the US and the UK. There are also many other productions worldwide. There are non-replica productions worldwide. It's a global sensation with enormous appeal and one of the most successful musicals ever. And rumours of a film adaptation had been spiralling like a tornado for more than 10 years years now. But it's finally happening and details have been trickling out. We've seen set leaks, we've heard recordings made uh, from a distance. There are still some cast mysteries, there are some possible cameos, there are some West End performers who seem to be making an appearance. And while these crumbs have been satisfying, we have now been well and truly fed with the first full trailer for part one of the Wicked movie. Because if you didn't know, now you know, the film is going to be released in two parts. The first coming this year and the second coming next year. Now before I react to and begin to discuss this trailer, I would like to apologise that this video is not reaching you as early as you may have been expecting. I know I'm normally faster than this. Let me tell you what happened when the Wicked trailer actually dropped and where I was. Because the trailer dropped yesterday as part of the Super Bowl in the US. And this is something that big film trailers do because so many people are watching the Super Bowl. So it guarantees a lot of eyeballs on that first ad release. Meanwhile, I had been live tweeting at the What's On Stage Awards at the London Palladium and was on my way to the after party. I don't know if it dropped while we were in the queue or right as soon as we got into the club, but my friend Danny, who is a big theater photographer, came over to me and said, did you know the Wicked trailer has dropped? Obviously I watched it there and then, like on the club dance floor, vodka lemonade in my hand, and I was just all of the emotions. I was shook, I was overwhelmed, I couldn't hear it. I just kept hearing it with different like club remixes. And I say I kept hearing it because not only did I watch it on loop, but I kept my phone out because this entire party was filled with the attendees of the Watson Stage Awards. And we are talking producers, cast members of a bunch of different West End shows. We are talking creatives, we are talking like legendary choreographers and just amazing people, wicked alumni, wicked producers, PR people, marketing people, all theatre people who would be very interested in this, the first look at the Wicked movie, right? So I considered it a public service to walk around the club, I'd had some drinks, holding up my phone like this, just showing people the Wicked movie. Some people like didn't get what was going on, some people just laughing as I was going past. Other people, once they realized what this was, like glued to my phone, like I must see and just like processing. <laughs> like, okay, okay, okay. <gasps> so I have seen the thing dozens of times at this point, but I didn't get to hear it until the next morning. However, finally getting around to properly reacting to the trailer here on YouTube and giving you my full analysis. I'm going to watch this. I won't be able to put the trailer on here because otherwise this whole video will get pulled down for copyright, but I will show you my reaction to it. And I will comment as much as I can. And then we are going to go through frame by frame, try and work out what it is that we're we're looking at and what this tells us about the film because there are a lot of questions that arise immediately from this trailer like immediately. Needless to say, and I know I say this every time, but if you enjoy today's video make sure to subscribe to my channel. Not only is it a big help but also there will be more Wicked Movie content as we approach the release of the film at the end of this year, so to make sure you don't miss out on any of that, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. Why can I now not find it? This should be the only thing on the internet right now. Who is watching anything else? Are you 1080p? I require a very high definition right now. Okay, so it starts with this still of the hat and then Jeff Goldblum is gonna do some talking as the wizard. She's touching some bricks. There's a train. We knew there was a train. I've seen people being like hot takey about the train. Boat, hair, students, extras. Ariana, Spectacles, Cynthia, American Accent, we'll come back to it, Oz, Oz Dust, Morrible, Magic, Acting, Flying, Monkeys, we're hearing Defying Gravity underneath this, Butterflies, Friendship, 
Colourful. Train again. One short day. Emerald City. Silver shoes. Creepy Wizard of Oz head. Broomstick. Holding the broomstick. Very Gregory Maguire. Original cover of the book. Ariana Grande mumbling. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Ariana. Breaking through a window. Very Brazil production. That riff. New Wicked logo and the word Thanksgiving. So many moments last night at this after party where I was just walking around just holding up Thanksgiving on my phone because I didn't realise it wasn't going to loop automatically and so people are looking at me weirdly because we're clubbing and I'm just holding up my phone saying Thanksgiving and like... Anyway, overall first impressions, like big picture thoughts, I am excited. It is obviously very CGI heavy and I've seen commentary from people being like, oh, I wish there were more practical effects. And sure, like if you go back to like The Wizard of Oz and like the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, then there's a lot of like magic and wonder in those films. But with like the scale of visual expectation now, I don't know that that's really a realistic expectation. And we've seen from set leaks that they built these really incredible set pieces, so it is not like entirely CGI, but I think a certain amount of that was to be expected. I think it looks cool, it's giving fantasy, it looks like really visually rich and striking, it's created a strong sense of its own world, which is what I want for Wicked, it bears a resemblance to the aesthetic of the show but also steps away from it because it doesn't feel quite as steampunky, we don't have the same sort of like cogs and wood aesthetic idea. Performances seem exciting, vibes seem exciting. There is so much of this trailer that you would have thought would be in the second film, so I don't know if this is just like a The Wicked Films Are Coming trailer pulling footage from both films, but I can't believe that there's not enough of intrigue just in the first film that they could just create a trailer from moments from the first film. So I don't know if this all is from the first film and we're just doing something interesting structurally. I'll expand on what I mean by that. Or if this is pulling footage from both films, um, uh, even though we're only promoting the first one. That's a bit of a curiosity. We're gonna go through frame by frame and discuss the visuals, but like talking about what we could hear, obviously it's just like the rumblings of Defying Gravity. Underneath, I enjoyed all of the line readings. You know, you don't really have enough context. Uh, I would say we could tell that Michelle Yao is going to be quite a sort of more serious and intimidating Madame Morrible, a little bit less theatrical than the stage version, especially the British stage version. I think she's going to be a little more serious, a little more austere. And Cynthia Erivo, this is headline news from my perspective, is going to be using an American accent. Cynthia, who is a British actress who went over to the States uh, when she transferred with the Broadway revival of The Colour Purple and has forged most of her career over in the US and good for her. But there was this curiosity because she is British and Jonathan Bailey is British and Ariana Grande is American as to what accent we would all be using. And it seems Cynthia's going American. Jonathan Bailey has recently worked in the US and done projects with an American accent. So maybe he too will use an American accent and that's just the way that we are going. But we do also know that there are a number of British Wicked alumni who are in this film. I can't remember how many have been officially announced and how many are just being rumored. There was also a performer last night at the Watson Stage Awards who saw my phone, pointed at it and said, oh, I'm in this. Um, and that hasn't been announced yet, so I'm not going to announce it here, but that's one way to find out. Let's go through frame by frame. So this first shot we see um, is the shot with the hat on the floor. It's a really interesting looking hat. I like the detail here. I think because what we see is the window there behind it, that this is the hat on the floor right before Glinda's going to pick it up and put it on Alphaba's head mid-defying gravity. And then we hear the do, 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 and the drum roll that will go into, I hope you're happy now that you're choosing this. It could also be earlier when we first see the hat when Glinda is sent it by uh, her granny who sent her the terrible hats. Let's carry on. Okay, we then have this shot of Alphaba putting her hand on the yellow bricks. I'm assuming that this is when she is visiting the site of the crashed house, uh, which has killed her sister Nessa Rose, but that again would be in the second film, you would have thought. And that's something that we're seeing a lot in this trailer. And so one of two things is happening here. Either they are pulling footage from the second film, and I don't know why they would need to, but it seems that they have, 
or something is happening in these films where it's not necessarily going to be an Act 1 movie and an Act 2 movie. Now, in the back of my mind, I think John M. Chu, the director, has actually suggested that that's what it is and that it's Act 1 is the first one and Act 2 is the second one. And I know we're finishing with Defying Gravity, which would suggest that. But could we be doing something more interesting, structurally speaking, where we're sort of pulling on moments from the future and the past and sort of not necessarily, like, alternating between the two, but seeing, like, flashes forward? I mean, the whole story starts in the stage production with Glinda in the future and then we travel back to the past. So are we seeing more of that in the film and could all of these scenes actually be seen in the first film? I do not know, but it's a possibility to my mind. Anyway, these are the yellow bricks that make up the yellow brick road. Elphaba's wearing a ring. You can see her broomstick there. There's not really much else that we can say about this. Then we see this shot of the train pulling in. We see many cogs at the front of the train. It's sort of futuristic and fantasy looking. This, I believe, is the train platform at Shiz University because we can see all of the other Shiz students. And because we see Alphaba in a similar outfit then in what I believe to be the Emerald City, I think this is Alphaba getting ready to go to the Emerald City before one short day in the Emerald City. She's currently alone. But I think she starts the scene there and then uh, Fiero turns up and then Glinda turns up or the two of them turn up. No, Glinda turns up because then they talk about Fiero and then Fiero turns up afterwards with the flowers and he goes straight past Glinda. That's what happens in the stage show. Then we have this aerial view of, I am assuming Shiz University because we can see this watery approach with a big arch underneath uh, the kind of the mountains that surround it that we're about to see Glinda's boat coming through in the next shot. But it looks incredible like it, it just looks absolutely insane also very like british in terms of the hills and the white cliffs less so much in terms of the fantasy castle like we have castles but but they don't look like this this looks more like it's a small world at disneyland then we can see ariana as glinda in the boat approaching it is being steered by staff i think both of her parents are in the boat obviously we don't see them in the stage show we are going to see them in the film and this is like a shiz arrival scene the next thing we see is cynthia revo as Elphaba approaching and kind of like adjusting her hair and we can see that there is a texture to her hair. She has like micro braids in the wig they have given her for this, which is very cool and looks great. She has a ring on a different finger than the ring that we saw before. We see various shiz students with various different eccentric hairstyles, very Spring Awakening original Broadway cast. We can see Glinda then with Fanny and Chen Chen, her friends. Everyone's reacting in horror because Elphaba's green. That's kind of the whole point. And then we see this exchange between Ariana and Cynthia with her as Glinda saying, you're green. And then uh, Cynthia replying, yes, I am. This is when we see her face for the first time. And I like the delivery of this line because I think it ties in with like the sarcastic speech that she's about to give. And she's like, oh, you don't say I am green. That's what I'm feeling from this interpretation of the line delivery. But we can also see her face. We can see all of the green makeup. Um, and yet despite all of that, it's these spectacles I'm the most drawn to. Um, the, the outfit actually also has some beautiful details as well. I love those sleeves and the collar, but these fun like fantasy spectacles that has like a metal piece running like an S below one of the pieces of glass and then above the other one on the other side. That's very cool. Then we have someone riding on a horse towards a sunset and we can see Oz in the distance. It's kind of the familiar Oz shot that we recognize from The Wizard of Oz. We're not straying too far from that particular aesthetic, although there will be differences coming later in the trailer. We then see a shot of Elphaba putting on a witch's hat with a bunch of people stood around. This is really fast in the trailer. But if you slow it down, you can see that this is the party scene. You can see Nessa Rose in her wheelchair with Ethan as Box standing behind her. And this is the Ozdust Ballroom. This is Dancing Through Life. Elphaba's come in wearing the hat that Glinda gave her. Uh, she thought it was a kind gift. Glinda's bullying her. And this is the moment where she puts back on the hat and she is going to dance defiantly. I'd be interested to see the rest of the design of the Ozdust Ballroom. I mean, I guess for like teenagers, like the coolest place in town isn't going to be some like grand, marvelous, expensive looking ballroom. It's going to feel like underground and edgy. But right now, I don't know. It's giving like Batman's secret cave or Superman's fortress of ice loneliness. Okay. Then we see a few different scenes with Cynthia and Michelle as Elphaba and Madame Morrible. Morrible teaching her about magic. Cynthia like rotating a floating coin in order to show magic. We see a scene 
with Ariana in the foreground as Glinda with a little lapel badge that kind of looks like it has lettering on it, but I can't tell what it says if it does. It's like a P and an S maybe? Ariana is Glinda looking disappointed and looking around at Elphaba. I don't know if this is the moment where she was trying to protest to Madame Morrible about not wanting to share with her and Morrible has then like said enough of this and walked away. Another close-up shot of Cynthia as Elphaba still loving the glasses. Then we get a shot of what looks like her like casting a magic spell but I do in fact think that this is her trying to dance. We can see the same people in the background. This once again is the bit in Dancing Through Life where she comes in, she's like, oh no, everyone's laughing at me. Let me dance in the middle on my own. And then we see the hat in front of the window again and a shot of a monkey flying out through the window and breaking the window. Now, it has just occurred to me, this could be the very end of the story with the hat being the only thing that's left after she is melted and the monkey then like flying out to go and deliver a message or just like flying away once that's happened. Um, I don't know why the window would not be broken yet. This could also be predefined gravity, but something about this window breaking is giving me pause because if this is the start of the defined gravity scene where she like helps the monkeys to fly um, and then she flies herself, like she, we know that she breaks a window to fly out in defined gravity. So like how many different windows are getting broken in this tower. This is why the wizard's annoyed. He has an expensive window bill, but that's also not when the monkeys flee because the monkeys only get freed when she goes back later in the second act after the wizard sings wonderful. So what is this moment here with this monkey flying out of a glass window? Are we to assume then that this isn't the wizard's tower, that this is the tower in her lair later on? And is it the end of the story? We can kind of see like steam and maybe even a little bit of like uh, scorch marks around the hat, so maybe that is post-melting. We see a shot of Glinda looking sad up in another room with windows. Can we study those windows in the window we just saw? Can we look at differences between windows? Yeah, okay, so it's a different win- this one has like things pointing in and then something slightly more square in the middle, but then the wizard's tower windows look different because they have a big circle in the middle. Okay, windows, different windows. This is not the level of detail I thought I would be analyzing this trailer in, but honestly, are you surprised? Glinda looking sad, looking up through a presumably broken window. The guards are around her. Morrible is there in her green I am now the press secretary in Oz outfit. Uh, this is the very end of Defying Gravity. This is going to be the very end of the first film when everyone's going down. Boom. Credits. I assume. Another shot of Michelle as Morrible with this nice asymmetric collar going on there in a nice eccentric white wig. And then off we have a shot of Jonathan Bailey as Fierro with his highlights and Cynthia Revo with one hand on his face. I think they're wearing, I'm, I'm getting school uniform from this. I don't think this is as long as you're mine. I think this is like freeing the lion cub. And yeah, he's got a cut on his face. That's what she's touching. She's like putting her thumb across a cut on uh, the side of his face next to his eye because the lion cub scratched him. And that's a line from the show, I'm a genius. But also get it girl. Then we see, okay, this is the one that has people confused. We see Ariana as Glinda in a wedding dress holding a bouquet with a veil and butterflies flying all around her. Now I wouldn't say that this is necessarily beyond what a wedding might look like for Glinda in Oz, but I have also seen a theory by my friend Kate online that this is not actually a real scene as such, that this is like a fantasy imagination that we see while Elphaba is singing, I'm not that girl. Presumably it would come during the lyrics like, blithe smile, lithe limb, she who's winsome, she wins him, blonde hair with a gentle curl and she's like picturing the wedding that Glinda and Fierro will go on to have because she's a dramatic, moody, emo teenager. Also, am I being completely insane or is one of the wedding guests here, Adina Menzel in a brown wig? There's just someone who looks like they could kind of be Adina. I'm looking for her because you know she's gonna be in this film. You know her and Chenoweth are both in this film. It hasn't been confirmed as far as I believe, but you know for a fact they're gonna be in there somewhere and they're gonna to wanna to hide them from these trailers. But yeah, I think the butterflies of this all is making it fantasy dream sequence. If anything, maybe Elphaba is somewhere where butterflies are actually flying around and then we see that as a motif in her imagination. I'm absolutely overthinking this. Then we have a nice shot from Elphaba and Glinda clearly being friends, but still at school. You know that they're young here because Glinda has 
pigtails, and they're either in a field of roses or poppies. There are like uh, defocused red flowers behind them. I'm hoping it's poppies because then that later is like a thing that would get called back on because of poppies appearing in the Wizard of Oz. Poppies. Then we see a shot of a sunset behind a tower with flying monkeys flying all around it. I think that this is the tower that uh, was one of Fiero's family's castles that Elphaba makes her hideout. I don't think this is the Wizard's Tower. It's not giving Emerald City. So again, you would have thought that that would be second film. Then we see, wow, we see this very colorful scene. I think this is Munchkinland, this sequence that we can see here. All of these different rows of colorful flowers leading down to this little dip with a little village in the middle. And that looks familiar of some of the leaked set photos we saw that we knew to be Munchkinland, or that we assumed were Munchkinland because of the dress that Ariana was wearing as Glinda. Then we see a shot of the train heading towards the Emerald City. I think this is like immediately pre one short day. That's the train they got on at Shiz. It's taking them to the Emerald City. They're going to sing the song. And this, I think, is what actually comes afterwards. You can see the train wheels on one side of them here. Uh, I think they're about to sing One Short Day. They're looking at the Emerald City for the first time, which incidentally, I believe was the last thing they had to go and reshoot after the strikes were over. Then we get to see the Emerald City. It's all green and gold, looking very cool, but also looking a little bit different to the Emerald City of the Wizard of Oz film, which I appreciate. Speaking of which, here comes Dorothy. Now we only get to see the back of her head and her feet, but when we do see her feet, we see that per the book and per Wicked, they are silver shoes, not ruby slippers. Ruby slippers, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that was a change made for the MGM film because they popped more on screen. In any case, these ones are silver, and I like that they're not just like bejeweled shoes, like they actually have this really cool design to them. They look lovely. She's wearing blue socks, which is accurate. She's got Toto with her as well. And I don't know how much we're actually going to see Dorothy because in the stage show, we only see the silhouette of her and like she is implied and we hear her whimpering, but she's not really a presence. You would assume because they're showing us this that we actually might see a little bit more of her. Then we see Jeff Goldblum giving it voice acting as the wizard. He's got a little mustache and a little goatee. Sure. And then we see this Wizard of Oz head, not dissimilar from the one in the stage production, but he's got things hanging down that make it look like the head has dreadlocks. And then a wide shot where we can see more of the head, lights around it looking quite creepy, but also critically, we see Dorothy and her three friends. We see a full CGI, I'm assuming lion, like it's not a person standing in a lion costume, it's just a full lion. We see the scarecrow, now we know who that is. We see the tin man, we know who that is as well. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, we didn't know that Dorothy and the scarecrow and the tin man and the lion would be in this, except we did, because of course we know Know that the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Lion are because we know where they come from in the Wicked interpretation of the story. Um, but still, this is not something, this is not a scene that we would see in the show. This is straight out of the first Wizard of Oz. Another shot of Goldblum at the controls. He's got a lovely coiffed wig as well. Again, I mean, the costume design, the wig design for everyone in this, just brilliant. Then we see a shot of Cynthia. Oh, now this is interesting pre-shattered window, but that's not the window because I looked at the window design. That's not the window the monkey flew out, but the window is already broken, but she hasn't flown out it yet. But she's magicking the broom towards her hand, which feels like the moment before she's about to fly off and do Defying Gravity, except the window is already broken. Could this be when she's come back post-Wonderful and she's about to fly off again? through the same broken window? I don't know, but I have questions about the fact this window is pre-broken. We see another shot that's like panning up from the bottom of the broom, her looking powerful, her like folding her fingers around it. I do think this is when she's gonna fly for the first time because this feels like such an anticipation building establishing shot. And then we see a shot, this is clearly the attic. You can see junk around, you can see the soldiers and she is flying up, or she's like, it looks like she's leaping through the air, but she's flying. She's only got one hand on the broom, trailing behind her. And then we see this explosion. Don't know what's going on there. These are all very short scenes that we're seeing, but the, the sort of leaping, flying into the air one is presumably the very start of like, it's me, so if you care to find me. And then if we pause at the right time, we see that these are all little lamps that are going to explode here with maps on the wall and leaflets flying around that say run and I think they've got a green face with a hat on them. I think this is like anti-alphaba 
propaganda. There's also green tile at the top of the walls. So I'm assuming that this is somewhere in Oz, uh, but it's the lights that explode. And then we see more flyers flying around. Then another HBIC shot of Morrible in a green dress, flying monkeys all around her. We see Ariana as Glinda all in pink this time, twirling around a corridor. This feels like it's popular. I feel like this is the vibe of popular. And so that's the outfit she's going to be wearing in that scene. It's an entirely pink, like long corridor. And I don't know if that's just all her personal dormitory at Shiz, or if that's the interior design of all the Shiz dormitories. A shot of gold bloom with yet another window design. This one's hexagons. How many different types of windows? God, if you're a glass maker in Shiz, you are busy at work. Is something exploding behind him? Oh, it seemed like something was about to explode behind him, but we didn't get enough of that scene. God, this bit is brief. Something's happening out that window behind him, and he's slowly turning around. Maybe that's like Elphaba coming back and like blowing things up in Oz and like the lights exploded and the flyers flew everywhere and he's then reacting to that from above and turning around to see it and maybe then she's going to appear and he's going to sing Wonderful. I don't know. We then see a scene with uh, Glinda and Alphaba. This is Defying Gravity because we can tell by the clothes that Glinda is wearing. She also says to her, don't be afraid. And then she's going to go, I'm not. It's the wizard who should be afraid of me. Then we see flying monkeys flying all over Oz. They have blue wings incidentally. Lovely feathers. And a shot of Ariana in the pink No One Mourns the Wicked dress that becomes the Munchkinland Dorothy arrival dress. Blue in the stage show, pink in the Wizard of Oz film, pink in this one as well. Um, and she's in this bubble that is just a bubble. It doesn't look like the mechanical one from the stage show. It just looks like a big magic bubble. Although having said that, the bottom of the bubble has this little platform that kind of looks like a fancy sofa or like a little bit of a stage. Now she stood in a tall building in the Emerald City and I feel like this shot is her getting ready to go and do the No One Mourns the Wicked bit. Whether we're going to see this right at the start of the first film or whether this is actually the very end of the whole thing when we see Glinda taking that moment before she goes to tell the people and like steadying herself. Normally she'd be holding the grimery at that point except she's not at the beginning of the show so it's sort of it's sort of a question mark but I'm wondering where this falls. We then see a shot of Glinda holding out her hand for Elphaba to take, and I feel like that's at the Ozdust Ballroom, although the steps in the background don't match the design that we saw earlier. We didn't really get to see that much of the venue. I'm not immediately recognizing either of the outfits that they are wearing, I don't think. In terms of what's happening, just like her holding out her hand and Elphaba taking it, that would make me assume it's the end of Dancing Through Life right before we go into popular, and it's the representation of the fact that they are about to become friends. Then we see a shot of Cynthia predefined gravity, and then we see the breaking through the window moment. She's wearing a hat, she's wearing a cape. Again, she's just holding the broom and then flying through the window. She's not actually astride it yet, but she breaks the window, tumbles down towards Oz, and then we see her holding it and kind of like one foot against it, flying around a tower, and then we see the big green Wicked logo. And that I think is all that we get. So there you go. That's what we know so far about the Wicked movie based on this trailer. We can draw some conclusions, but I think it kind of provokes as many questions as it answers, which is going to keep us in suspense, which is good. I do think that we have seen some footage from the second film. I don't think, I mean, there's so many moments that seem to be from the second act of the show. I don't think that can all be because of an interesting structural approach. However, we will just have to wait to find out. Now, in the meantime, like I said, make sure you're subscribed to my channel here on YouTube for more Wicked Movie updates. Also, comment down below with what you thought of this trailer. Are you excited for the film? Has this changed your mind about it at all? Did you notice anything in the trailer that I haven't commented on in today's video? Let us all know. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video and that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>